Good day and welcome to RT Drugs Limited Q3 FY24 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward looking statements about the company which are based on the belief, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode. and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr adish patel cfo and coo thank you and over to you thank you good afternoon everyone hope everyone is doing well On behalf of RT Drugs Limited, I extend a warm welcome to everyone joining us today to discuss our financial results for quarter and nine months ended 31st December 2023. On this call, we are joined by Mr. Harshan Sawna, Joint Managing Director, Mr. Harish Shah, Whole Time Director of RT Drugs Limited, and Mr. Vishwa Sawla, Managing Director of Pinnacle Life Science Private Limited, and ACA. our investor relations advisor i hope everyone had an opportunity to go through the financial results trade release and investor presentation which we have uploaded on the stock exchange and on our company website let me begin by sharing an update on the ongoing capital investments the capital expenditure incurred during first 9 months of fy24 amounted to approximately rupees 162 crore and the targeted total capex for the entire fiscal year shall remain between around 250 to 300 crores greenfield projects at gujarat saika for specialty chemicals was slightly delayed and is expected to be completed by march or april of this calendar year and tarapur project on dermatology product is on track and in the final stages of completion and most probably will be starting by the end of this month itself operational commitment of dermatology product has said is anticipated by the end of january of current calendar year this shall lead to operating leverage from next fiscal year once these projects are commissioned and capacity utilization is ramped up now coming to the financial performance In Q3 FY24, our revenue stood at rupees 608 crore as against 665 crore, decline of 8.6 percent, mainly on the account of negative rate variance. EBITDA stood at rupees 72 crore, with EBITDA margin at 11.8 percent, improved by 100 basis points year on year. PAT stood at rupees 37 crore, and PAT margin. At 6.1 percent, include by 60 basis points. For nine months, in fact, 24, our revenue stood around at rupees 1,912 crores, as against rupees 1,975 crores, decline of 3.2 percent. EBITDA stood at rupees 234 crores, as against rupees 213 crores. EBITDA margin stood. At 12.2 percent, improved by 140 basis points. PAT stood at rupees 124 crores, and PAT margin at 6.5 percent, improved by 90 basis points. Now coming to segmental performance. In the quarter gone by, in spite of the visible geopolitical uncertainty and macroeconomic volatility, the company has demonstrated resilience by achieving. around 8.4% year on year volume growth in apis amid lower realization due to negative rate variance which have impacted revenues in q3 fy24 nevertheless it is noteworthy that there has been improvement in gross margin attributed to stabilization of input cost for the majority of our products and operational efficiency we anticipate Gross margins to improve further at current selling prices, 
and also on the account of increased proportion in the revenue contribution from export sales for the standalone business which was down in q3 or by 24 recently the challenges encountered in certain export regions during fy24 attributed to heightened interest rates dollar shortages de-stocking and conservative ordering has not gone unnoticed however we are cautiously optimistic about a forthcoming turnaround in our export business in near future on the back of the anticipated interest rate reduction and the end of de-stocking cycle within the api business the antibiotic therapeutic category contributed around 48% anti diabetic around 14% anti protozoal around 16% anti inflammatory around 10% anti fungal around 9% and the rest contributed around 4% to the total api sales for q3 fy24 formulation segment revenue stood at rupees 79.3 crores for the quarter a growth of 58.7% year on year with exports contribution of around 58% in 9 months fy24 revenue stood at rupees 257 crores with growth of 18.2% year on year specialty chemical industry while india's domestic chemical demand is expected to stay strong in 2024 price expectations are not very robust as the market struggles to find the right balance amid the new production capacities coming on screen in the country and in china changing trade flows weak global demand and volatile upstream prices coming to standard performance for the quarter the revenue for q3 fy24 stood at rupees 540 crores as against rupees 627 crores a decline of 13.8% year on year standard business contributed around 87% to the consolidated revenue for the quarter around 67% of this revenue came from the domestic market and 33% from the export market for q3 fy24 domestic revenue declined by around 4.5% while exports decreased by around 29% year on year for q3 fy24 although on blended basis volumes grew by approximately 9% mainly because of fantastic volume growth in the domestic market as we navigate through short term challenges our commitment to overcome these obstacles and achieving long term success remains unwavering our journey may be characterized by uncertainty since past couple of years but it is equally defined by our collective ability to adapt innovate and emerge stronger today united and determined the company shall continue to spread the success story i reiterate on our positive outlook for both our api and non api business our ongoing projects coupled with optimized capability will serve as the cornerstone of steady growth in the ensuing years importantly we anticipate continued growth in exports within the formulation business which shall be an important growth driver for the bottom line in coming years also board of directors in the board meeting held on 24 january 2024 recommended an interim dividend payout of rupees 1 rupee per share with this we can now begin question and answer session thank you thank you very much We will now begin the question and answer session. Participants present on the audio bridge who wish to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants who wish to ask a question are requested to press star and one on their phone now. We have a first question from the line of Pramod Dangi from Unify Investment Management. 
please go ahead hello yeah i would like to know the uh, trade uh, component of the uh, exports as well as domestic how much, how much of it is uh, supplied to trade and how much of it to the ultimate formulators okay hari bhai would you like to answer this question most of our sales are directly to the consumer uh, for exports yeah okay so given that uh, so uh, so we can't hear you clearly can you use your handset mode yeah so mm-hmm. in the opening remarks you had mentioned that uh, there is uh, uh, destocking and uh, interest rates uh, causing some pressure so if yeah. to the ultimate formulators yeah. um is is interest rates uh, you know, a big variant of uh, the no, uh, uh, yeah. major major problem was destocking also uh, because of uh, in the covid times people have uh, bought a lot of uh, api and intermediates and that finished formulation stocks were at peak level and what also is happening is that uh, most of the countries have local uh, tender for their social health uh, due to dollar issue and uh, interest high interest rate they are not coming out with new tenders although the stock levels are now coming down for them also okay and the new capex that we have planned uh, there are some uh, new products also so are uh, the customer validation uh, would happen after the commercial production starts or has that already been happened so i wanted to understand how how long it will take for the new capacities of new products to come into where, where the commercial sales uh, can start yeah so the customer validation for dermatology products have already been started Uh, we spoke with uh, the, all the important customers uh, in the domestic market so that has already been done uh, as far as the specialty second project an intermediate project of company of saika uh, majority of the production will be consumed for our own we uh, almost more than 50% would be self consumption uh, for one of our api and the rest of the uh, you can say um, by not exactly by products but the side products of uh, that chain would be sold outside and there also we have means uh, we know few customers where we have already spoken to them uh, regarding the upcoming capacities okay so you you expect the uh, commercials uh, i mean sales to start in the first quarter of the uh, operation i mean the the uh, facilities being operational yeah to some extent definitely yes. Okay. Thank you. I'll join back to you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Romil from Chelsea Investments. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. I uh, just wanted to know like can you throw some light on the details of our new project finishing up at Tarapur and Saika? What will be its capacity and how will be the utilization level be? phase wise once operational and expected revenue yes yeah. so the saika one as i said is mainly for capital consumption uh, but if you talk about the dermatology product our uh, the final aim of the capacity is around 2000 tons per month uh, however we will be ramping up that capacity uh, one by one means uh, we will start but but that ramp up should happen within 6 uh, 7 months and at the same time even the customer when i mean as as per the previous question when the customers will start uh, procuring step by step it won't happen uh, right in the beginning so probably for the dermatology products we can expect some uh, uh, approximately you know uh, 30 30 40% utilization in the first year okay okay and what price levels for api products are favorable going forward so the current price levels are very favorable in terms of overall demand of the api because the, uh, they are almost back to the pre uh, pre covid levels historical levels of pre covid uh, so we don't see the prices of raw materials and apis going down further but as you correctly pointed out since september 2023 that is the previous quarter uh, the sale sales selling prices have further fallen down by around 7% on aggregate basis but uh, going forward we feel that that uh, 
further phones will uh, definitely curtail. Okay, uh, I'm done with it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and 1 on your phone now. We'll take a next question from the line of Parth Vasani from KK Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, uh, we can't hear you clearly, Parth. Uh, am I audible? Uh, can you speak a bit louder, please? Uh, am I audible now? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, so sir, uh, I had two questions. Uh, so first one was on the margin front. So uh, due to the price cut and weak demand, so how our margins are uh, impacted and what is the scope for further improvement, if you can just throw some light on that. Yes. So uh, as you can see that the, our gross margins have actually improved uh, year on year basis. Quarter on quarter basis, it has very slightly improved by around uh, 15, 20 basis points. But uh, what we expect was that the margin should have grown, uh, gross margin should have grown even more. Uh, what happens in the API business, API and second business, is that for every product, it is product specific, for every product there is certain markup in terms of absolute number uh, per kg. So what we have seen in the last quarter, uh, even if we compare to the historical numbers of that markup, that market has not been achieved, and that, is, that was mainly because of the volatile scenario, the falling trend, which continued in December quarter. So even if we reach that uh, fixed markup, our margin should definitely improve by around a couple of percent going forward uh, in terms of gross margin, and that will reflect in EBITDA margin as well. Okay, okay. Oh, that was helpful. Uh, sir, uh, second question was uh, on the side of formulation segment, uh, which has done well this quarter. So just wanted to know, are there any plans for uh, increasing its contribution in our revenue or something like that? Vishwa, can you answer the question? Yeah, sure. Uh, so yes, uh, formulation uh, business uh, uh, under the name of Pinnacle is growing uh, due to primarily as we are the uh, transitioning from a contract manufacturing uh, based model to more of uh, own exports um, on branded and uh, uh, branded generic exports. Um, so your uh, the contribution, both in terms of the um, uh, revenues as well as margins, uh, we see um, uh, good uh, you know, uh, chances of increase. And we are opening up additional markets. Uh, we have a number of new product launches and new market launches planned over the next uh, 24 months. As well as there is a, a capacity enhancement a brownfield project ongoing. Um, so post April, we expect to have, have additional capacities of about uh, 30%. As well as we've uh, set up a new uh, a new manufacturing plant dedicated for oral oncology anti-cancer molecules, which has just begun, and we are expecting uh, US FDA and EU audits to happen in. Uh, 2024 calendar year. So, with those approvals coming and product launches and capacity enhancement, uh, we see um, uh, high growth over the next few years for the formulation sector. Great, great. That sounds good. Uh, yeah, that is it from my side for now. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Before we take the next question, would like to remind participants to press star and one to ask a question. We have a question from the line of Pooja Mehta from JC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, so I have a couple of questions. So first question is, so with, since our largest export market is Latin America and our standalone exports revenue has declined substantially, so what are the challenges we are facing and how do we see it going ahead? Very good. Like to answer this. Yeah, uh, Paul, we see we are, uh, in Latin America has suffered a lot. Uh, we are, uh, due to uh, ma major problems were uh, dollars uh, interest rates uh, and uh, dollar shortage. And third was uh, inventory uh, destocking. So if more, we expect uh, maybe another one quarter after uh, second quarter of this, uh, account, uh, this year, uh, 2024, we expect demand to uh, come up again, you know, basically. Uh, 
So a lot of uh, uh, this talking has start almost getting over. We feel that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we see positive growth ahead. Yeah. Okay, okay, and also one more question. So currently we are facing freight cost rise due to supply chain issues in Red Sea, or any other challenges? No, as of now we don't have any other challenges uh, except the, uh, we buy some raw materials from European sources. There we are facing some delays, but uh, for, for as far as we uh, because of Red Sea issue, but uh, as of now we have. Uh, we are okay with the inventories, so we don't have an issue on the production. Okay, so freight freight cost is fine, like yeah, yeah, freight costs have gone up, but that we added uh, most of the our export shipments are fifty percent of our export shipments are FOB, uh, so that doesn't uh, affect us. And otherwise, we increase we get a revised rates from the customers. Okay, okay, got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Pramod Dangi from Unify Investment Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks again. Uh, so there are two things. You know, you just commented to the previous question uh, that uh, last quarter we were down 7%. This quarter again we are down on top line. Well, the volume is good. But in the March 2020, we were, you know, we are sitting on a huge uh, high base. So what kind of pricing impact we see going forward for the you know quarter on quarter or the year on year from March to March uh, because the pricing is already there and you are saying that there will be no more negative growth so what kind of the volume we are expecting uh, see uh, as far as the pricing is concerned uh, we feel that the negative rate variance should stop uh, at least it should reduce significantly because what we are it, it might be that little bit, because what we observed last time was by February 2023, last year that is, uh, the raw material prices uh, stopped correcting. But it was still, I think, February, uh, the raw material prices kept on going down. So a slight impact might be seen in March, but it won't be that uh, sharp as uh, December quarter on year on year basis. Okay, okay. And uh, I believe that uh, whatever we saw uh, in the September quarter, the inventory impact is already there uh, behind us, right, uh, in terms of uh, raw material costs. So the high thing cost is, uh, typically, we, yeah, typically, if you consider raw material, WIP and FG all put together, almost 90 to 100 days of stock is there in the chain, the entire uh, value chain. So, uh, and what we have seen is that our December selling prices were almost on an aggregate basis 7% lower than the September selling prices on the account of uh, falling RM. Uh, so probably uh, now now they have stabilized in last quarter, but then uh, it, the little bit of it might flow, you know, might be consumed and sold in the first half of March quarter. Okay, great. And lastly, if I may, uh, you know, any 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 update on the American uh, the FDA regulations? Uh, we were waiting for the inspection uh, to be uh, uh, to happen. Yeah, actually, yeah. The thing is, uh, uh, we had received the communication that the, our file was already passed to the OR department, that is the inspection department. From the, the all the responses were reviewed and they were found adequate, and they passed on our file to the inspection department. Now, now the thing is, most of the time the Inspections are certain inspections. Uh, so probably we might take a one one follow up from the local uh, inspection department that uh, our inspection audit, audit has been pending. So if you can hurry that up, so we might do a follow up uh, in January. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. We have a next question from the line of Skand Chaturvedi from Inar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, very good afternoon, sir. And thank you for the opportunity. Sir, I just wanted to know about the plans for achieving a tax free status on roadmap. Can you please highlight the roadmap? And timeline for reducing and eliminating the debt from the. I'm company. sorry, sir, you're not very clear. Can you use your handset mode, please? Yeah. 
Can you hear me? Uh, can you speak, please? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to inquire about the plans for achieving a debt-free status of the company. Could you please highlight the roadmap towards reducing and eliminating the debt? Okay. Uh, so, uh, our current debt-to-equity ratio on a console basis is uh, 0.47. So historically, we, since historically means uh, almost uh, 20, 25 years. Uh, I'm talking about uh, five to seven years before today, before uh, 2024. Uh, we had run the company around 1.4 to 1.5x days. So we have reduced that sharply to 0.47 in, uh, in spite of the fact that we have been doing a uh, lot of capex for the future growth. So in spite of that, we were able to reduce our uh, Liquidity to 0.47. So the thing is, uh, once now the project gets operationalized, uh, to reduce debt won't be an issue for us. But the problem is, if we reduce debt too much, our ROE will also go down. And uh, frankly speaking, we are very much comfortable to run a debt of around you know 0.5 to 0.7 uh, in terms of debt to equity ratio. We are very much comfortable doing that. So. Probably means uh, we are not looking for a debt-free company, but yeah, definitely we will keep debt to the minimum level so that it won't hamper means uh, it won't create any cash crunch for the company anytime in near future. And I would also like to highlight the fact that we have also done buybacks in the beginning of this year. Along with the capex, we have also done the buyback. And in spite of all these uh, cash outflows and shareholder payouts, our debt to equity is still uh, 0.47 as of now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to participants to press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Rishali Shah from Unify Investment Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, congratulations on the set of numbers. Uh, a year back, there was a mention of uh, increasing the contribution of specialty chemical and intermediaries to 20 to 25%. My question is on that front, um, what kind of chemistries or what kind of products are we targeting and uh, what is the roadmap uh, going ahead? So that is what I wanted to ask. Haribai, would you like to answer about the product line? Yeah. So for, we, for your specialty chemical, we are coming out with methyl amines project, uh, which we are expecting to be commissioned somewhere in Feb, March or April. Uh, so there we are going to make dimethyl amine, uh, uh, monomethyl amine, and trimethyl amine. Uh, then 50% of their uh, consumption is within the group, and 50% we need to sell outside the outside market. The second project is uh, of salicylic acid. We are planning to make 2,000 tons per month eventually. And we are starting the production somewhere in first week of next month, uh, or the first week of next month, yeah, in February. And uh, so we will start gradually, and uh, at this moment we'll run at 20, and as uh, Adish mentioned, first year of our capacity utilization will be 30 to 40 percent for that. Mm -hmm. So if both project goes to uh, on live, then our specialty chemical business value will go up. Like, that's what, uh, yeah. Okay, that's Back from my side, thank you so much. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we'd like to remind participants to press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Ruchi Gupta from Value Consultancy. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, can you please throw some light on the speciality, specialty chemical segment? How do we see in FI25 growing? Also, we are coming up new plant in Gujarat. What are the plans regarding that? Yeah. So as Harit Bhai was mentioning that the uh, Saika plant will be operational by April, mostly by April end of this current calendar year. And uh, we have chlorosulfonation product line as well. Uh, those capacities are there in Tarapur that will also be ramped up. Uh, then uh, we are coming up with uh, salicylic acid as well, which will be a dermatology product. Uh, so overall, uh, second business, uh, we can see a very good growth. Means uh, we can easily uh, double it once all the, all these uh, production line production capacities come up. Uh, 
for the next financial year overall uh, it's slightly difficult to say as of now but we'll definitely target a handsome growth of around 30 to 40 percent but it all de- depends on the uh, rate variation i the hopefully the further negative rate variation won't take place if that is there then we should be able to achieve very high double digit growth in the second phase yeah okay uh, also on raw material prices plant uh, how were the prices for top raw materials in quarter 3 versus a uh, previous quarters and uh, your views on future likely prices to be hari uh, sir we like to yeah. also on hello yeah. 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 also on raw material prices plant how were the prices for our top raw materials in q3 versus previous quarters and uh, your views on uh, future likely prices to be yeah see most of our raw major raw materials uh, are pre uh, less than pre covid levels and we don't expect further price going down uh, uh price from quarter 2 to quarter 3 of course definitely prices have come down uh, of raw materials now prices are more or less stabilized and we don't expect further uh, price reduction in these chemicals intermediates yeah Yeah, thank you. That's helpful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. We have our next question from the line of Madhur Rati from Counter Cyclical Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Sir, I wanted to understand for next two to three years with all this capex coming in and new sources of revenue coming in. Sir, what kind of top line and bottom line growth do we expect going forward? Yeah, so uh, definitely we will target uh, a volume growth of, of around 10 to 15 percent for coming years. Uh, we are taking into account that the newer projects will typically have some troubleshooting problems. uh which will work some soon and then there will be some gestation period as well in terms of uh, demand to pick up means uh, getting the product approval from various customers so we are we are thinking of 10 to 15% but that will continue in the uh, further years as well so overall uh, we plan to achieve uh, around 4000 to 4500 for the standalone company uh, from all these uh, new capacities which are coming up Answer. What kind of uh, margins do we see from this incremental revenue coming in from the specialty chemical uh, as well as the EPI business? Yeah. So typically, uh, from the market, what we have seen for these products, the EBITDA level margins are quite high. That way, in the upwards of 18-20 percent. But the thing is, uh, when we come with a newer capacity, definitely we expect some bit of price wars. So initially, we probably around 15 16% ebitda margin should be fairly achievable from this product is what we believe uh okay and so do we have some off takers for the salicylic acid as well as the methylamine project so sorry uh, sir do we have some off takers for the salicylic acid as well as the methylamine okay. project that will be okay. starting your your off take yes sir No, uh, so the thing is, uh, salicylic acid plant will start in next week. Uh, so we have already spoken with customers, and they are ready to buy from us because uh, we will be the only manufacturer after China for this product for Indian market. Uh, so that sale should pick up pretty fast. And the Saika one, as Harid Bhai was telling, that around more than 50 percent is the captive consumption. So that uh, we will immediately start consuming. Uh, okay. uh, thank you sir and all the thank you thank you thank you before we take the next question would like to remind participants to press star and one to ask a question the next question is from the line of tushar manudani from motila loswal financial services please go ahead no, thanks for the opportunity sir uh, i joined call bit late so maybe it could be okay. repeated uh, but just wanted to understand this prices continue to You know, uh, fall in the API segment. Um, is it just partly to do with the ro- lower raw material cost, and so subsequently it is passing on to the benefit to the customers, or there is something more to this? And how long will this happen? 
Yeah. Uh, Tushar, can you please mute your line? There's some background disturbance on your line. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, the, the the main factor for the uh, selling prices of APIs to go down in December quarter was related to the falling raw material prices. But having said that, I would also like to point, point out that last quarter our exports did not do well. And uh, that is the and in the export market, typically you get higher gross contribution and higher margins because of the requirement of higher regulatory approval. Uh, so because of that, the, since the proportion of those sales is higher than prices that went down, uh, we had double impact. Since not only because of raw material, the selling prices went down, but also on an average level because the export component was lesser in December quarter, hence it went down a little further. So on that account, we feel that we should be able to regain uh, some bit of uh, margin uh, in terms of uh, gross contribution. But on the pricing front, are you witnessing further reduction in the, in the raw material prices? So yeah, so that question, Haritha answered that uh, uh, as compared to September quarter, we saw some reduction uh, in December quarter, but now the prices have stabilized. So now we are not forcing further reduction because even the selling prices of APIs and even the raw material prices, uh, they are almost to the level of pre-COVID levels, the pre-COVID historic levels. So we don't foresee that they can go down further, considering the fact that over the last four years, even the inflationary, other inflationary factors are also there. So we don't foresee the raw material prices to go down further. Having said that, uh, we do carry um, the raw material WIP and which would all put together. We do carry around 90 to 100 days of inventory in pipeline. So a little bit of that inventory will be sold, sold in the first half of uh, March quarter as well. So that might impact the performance of March quarter to some extent. Understood. Uh, and, and just uh, the on the inventory in the system, not at the company level, but at the industry level, you think that the inventory for our core products are largely now stabilized and uh, at the lower levels and so that will not further drag the prices as far as our products are concerned. Yeah, that, that is what we feel, uh, especially in export market, because as far as domestic market was concerned, uh, we had done a fantastic volume growth uh, of around 20% year on year. Uh, for December quarter. Uh, so domestic uh, demand point of view, there is no issues. Uh, the only issue lies with the export market. So that we are talking and we believe that now it should be done. So we hope that uh, the demand should pick up for the export market as well in the coming quarters. Understood, sir. Thanks. Thanks a lot for this. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. To ask a question, please press star and one. We have a next question from the line of Rishali Shah from Unify as Investment Management. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking me again. Uh, my question is that there is some seasonality that we can see uh, in case of formulation segment in both domestic as well as export front. So uh, is it expected to stabilize uh, further as we grow or looking at YOI numbers is a better uh, method for it? Uh, so, uh, as far as seasonality is concerned in our product, uh, or antibiotic, anti diarrhea, these two segments, historically what we have seen, uh, the December quarter is the leanest quarter. And March, June, and September quarters are usually better in terms of these therapeutic categories. But rest of the categories like uh, anti-diabetic and cardioprotectant, even anti-inflammatory to some extent, uh, we don't see much of seasonality. But having said that, our antibiotic uh, does contribute around 44% to the total API sales. Uh, and API sales would be roughly somewhere around 78 to 80% uh, to of the console sales. Uh, I guess I was not clear. Uh, I, my question was on the formulation front, uh, okay. that we, we see certain seasonality there, that H1 is quite good, whereas H2 like is to... lean. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, going forward, at least on the more on the international markets, we don't think uh, the formulation business will be subject to much of seasonality change. 
um however what is happening currently since the business is uh, very new in in many of the international markets we are having uh, some new product launches some new markets opening up which is what is causing a uh, majority of uh, uh, the changes uh, but going ahead we uh, don't foresee uh, too much of seasonality impact on on the formulation business uh, of course on the domestic uh, cmo part there will be a little uh, a slight impact uh, uh during the winter the uh, season is a little uh, lower uh, but uh, in general in totality we don't uh, think uh, uh, the business would suffer a lot uh, would change a lot due to seasonality impact uh and can you please throw some more light on domestic cmo front uh, which you just mentioned right now yeah so domestic cmo has been our uh, core business in uh, in pinnacle in the formulation segment since we started um however the objective has been uh, that over the, the last couple of years we have been uh, uh, increasing our uh, uh, con- sales and production contribution more towards international markets more towards our own uh, uh, branded generics so as of now about um, uh, depending quarter to quarter about 40 to 50% of our business is still uh, uh, coming from the domestic cmo uh and with our volume expansions going on we uh, we plan to maintain that around uh, around for, at around 40% and in the domestic uh, cmo segment we cater to most of the leading uh, indian uh, um, uh, mncs and uh, primarily on products where we have backward integration on the apis we supply those products uh, to them Thank you so much. This was all from my side. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and 1 on your phone now. We have a question from the line of Gagan Tareja from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, am I audible? Uh, so not very loud. Hey, is this better? Can you hear me now? Uh, not really. Can you speak now, please? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, yes okay. okay. So the first question is on the working capital. If you could give some idea of, you know, how inventory and receivable days uh, compare at the close of uh, this quarter versus a year ago. Yes. Uh, so if you see uh, at the big piece, uh, if you compare with the March 2023 numbers, uh, the December 2023 numbers look much better in terms of uh, data size. In so fact, we were able to reduce the December. Data. Would it be possible to give it? And talking about December 23 as compared to March 23. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm I'm asking December 23 compared to December 22, if it's possible. Ah, uh, December 22 is that number I don't have right now. Okay. March 23 I have. Okay. So March March numbers were in somewhere around 100 days. Uh, okay. But that has come down to 90 days for the December 2023. Okay. I don't have. Maybe maybe offline I can give you those numbers. All right. All right. And. Uh, would would uh, year to date the company have uh, taken some sort of inventory losses because you would have been holding you know input inventories uh, uh, at high cost and they have continuously dropped through the year uh, uh, and if so can you enumerate the value of the inventory losses that you would have taken uh, so the thing is uh, uh, this time we haven't taken any inventory losses because the domestic sale was high. Uh, so everything has been sold. Uh, nothing is in stock which is at a, a level, uh, you know, which we have valued over the market value. So that is not there. So that is why we haven't taken any inventory losses as of December. But because but most of the product was sold, no? so automatically it came in the raw material pricing. No, I I understand, but would there not have been any mark-to-market sort of impact on? No, that did not happen for December eighteenth. Okay, but for the first half of the year, did uh, if if there was any? 
So uh, the thing is, uh, typically what happens generally, if we are holding to a lot of stock, then such things happen uh, in terms of uh, marking down. Uh, December quarter, uh, frankly speaking, our volumes were up by eight and a half to nine percent. Uh, so, so, so that way uh, we were able to sell the product, and that is the reason why it did not come in inventory losses, but actually it came in the gross contribution itself of December number, December quarter. Okay, fine. So, uh, I mean, as you head into FY25, you know, you you said that even from September to December, your prices have have gone down, right? So, if if you know prices stabilize here on year on year, at least for the first two three quarters of the next financial year, also your pricing would be lower. Uh, and if you have volume growth of 10 to 15 percent. Uh, would that therefore mean that value growth would be lower than that because the pricing, uh, if, if it maintains the current levels, would be lower than what you have seen in the first half or first nine months of this year? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. So, as you correctly pointed out, the first two quarters, the June quarter and September quarter, prices were much higher than what the prices are today, you know, what we are seeing in December quarter. Yeah. So definitely for the next year, uh, uh, first two quarters can see some bit of uh, negative price variation. Okay. Uh, but then, but then we feel that uh, it's just, so it won't be that that high as we are seeing right now year on year basis. But our volume should go further because the new capacities would be added uh, for the next financial year. So that should also take care of uh, some bit of volume growth. So, so just to just to get you know some idea because you know you talk of a substantial amount of new capacity coming on board. First thing is you know when you monetize it fully, what's the revenue potential of these assets that are getting commissioned today or in the near future? And you know over the next year, uh, where do you see uh, utilizations? Uh, broadly on, on these assets. And thirdly, you know, uh, there will be fixed costs associated with these assets, which as and when you commission them, you know, will come into the OPEX. And, and obviously, till the time you hit a reasonable utilization, those costs will uh, impact margins, if I understand it correctly. So, while, you know, while at optimum utilization, they might benefit margins to start with the actually impact margin. So if you could, you know, give your assessment of these three factors, one, full potential to what uh, what could be utilization, three, what could be the margin trajectory starting and at optimal levels. Okay. So the new capex, what we are planning, uh, what will come online in next uh, couple of months, uh, we see that, that uh, at current price levels, the revenue potential and the incremental revenue potential from these new projects would be anywhere between 1000 to 1200 crores. Okay. Uh, so, and uh, as, as you correctly, but the thing is, uh, in which what happens is that uh, as we are scaling up the production, uh, the workforce and everything which is added uh, is typically on incremental basis. So, it won't create that big of a drive. Uh, means first year, means even even at uh, I would say 30 percent utilization, we would be able to make uh, profits out of it. Not that we uh, will make losses. Uh, so, so 1200 crores uh, optimal. Yeah, at the optimal level, when yeah. we go, uh, you see cur current market as per the current market trend, those products are taking upwards. Yeah, yeah, no, no. As per the current market trend, those products are fetching EBITDA margins upwards of 18 to 20 percent. But uh, the thing is, once the capacity is launched, uh, there might be some bit of uh, price wars. So, but still, we feel that uh, 15 to 16 percent should be easily achievable from the new but product. If, so, 15 to 16 is achievable at what utilization levels is what I'm trying to understand. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, beyond 50%, we should be able to achieve that. Okay.
ओके एंड एंड फॉर एफ आई ट्वेंटी फाइव यू यू आर एस्पायरिंग फॉर वॉट शॉर्ट ऑफ यूटिलाइजेशन बेसिकली वॉट यूर सींग इज दैट इंक्रीमेंटली द द न्यू कैपेसिटी शुड गिव यू अ टर्न ओवर ऑफ फोर हंड्रेड ऑड क्रोर्स इन द कमिंग ईयर एंड वाइल ऑप्टिमल मार्जिन कुड बी फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन परसेंट वेन यू हिट दैट यूटिलाइजेशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एम आई करेक्ट इन सेंग फोर हंड्रेड क्रोर्स आर यू सेंग दैट यूल एग्जिट द ईयर एट थर्टी फॉर फोर्टी परसेंट यूटिलाइजेशन स्टार्टिंग एट जीरो एंड देफो ब्लेंडेड यूटिलाइजेशन विल बी मोर लाइक फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी परसेंट करेक्ट करेक्ट सो वी विल बी एग्जिटिंग एट दैट लेवल ओके इनिशियल फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड क्वार्टर इट देर माइट बी सम कमर्शियल लेवल सो सो बेसिकली फिफ्टीन परसेंट यूटिलाइजेशन इज वॉट यू विल हैव फॉर फॉर दिस एंड दैट वुड मीन यू नो रफली हंड्रेड सेवेंटी हंड्रेड एंड एटी क्रोज इन टर्न ओवर ट्राई मोर नो डाउट विल ट्राई मोर बिकॉज द कैप्टिव कंजम्पशन दैट वील इमीडिएटली गो ऑफ Right. I, I, I get your point, uh, but but if you know if the incremental turnover from from this asset in the first year is going to be around 170, 180, what could be the incremental EBITDA you know you could generate from that? I I, I presume it would be less than 15 percent, or probably more like 10, 10, 12 percent to start with, and then it moves up as you as you sort of. you know exit the year perhaps you will be you know absorbing your costs better and and there uh, the quarterly run rates might be higher in margins but for the full of next year uh, the new facility margins would probably be more closer to what you are doing right now would that be a reasonable assessment uh so ebita uh, the, the main drag factor would be depreciation and the interest So at the EBITDA level, probably we will still be able to make better margin than okay. 10-12%. Okay. Uh, but as you said, but at the PBT level, there might be a little bit of drag because of depreciation and interest. All right, all right, I, I get that. Uh, right, sir. And uh, and on the current, um, you know, capacity that you have, incrementally, how much more can that add? I mean, when you say. you know you talk of 10 to 15% volume growth you're talking of that coming entirely from your existing capacity or you're taking into consideration the new capacity as well that is uh, including the new capacity as well so the existing capacity would give you how much in in terms of additional volume growth uh we can target somewhere between 5 to 5 5 to 10% okay Second, and and would you be in a position to do better gross margins on on the existing capacities uh, going into the next year yes, yes that is what we uh, believe from the uh, of of what order could the gross margin be higher by uh, we feel that frankly speaking if we uh, restore back to that markup basic markup beyond uh, over over the rmc cost it can Uh, push our existing uh, margin profile by a couple of percent. Push up. Okay. 